Hey, this is Patty. And I'm Jamie. And we are Motley Zoo Animal Rescue. And this is... Rescue Shit. Beep. <laughs> In this episode, we are going to talk about Motley Zoo's merchandise, which is... Our... Go ahead. Our brand. Yes, our brand. Motley Zoo's brand. We were cool with branding before being a brand was even <laughs> cool. Obviously, Motley Zoo has some pretty unique branding, and... We really like to play on the music theme and have some fun with the designs. There's some interesting things about our merchandise, so we just wanted to talk to you about it today and share with you some of the fun. Our branding started with my husband, Brian, who is also on the board. He was a co-founder of Motley Zoo with me, and he is the genius behind the aesthetic of Motley Zoo. He started with the uh, Motley Crue Dr. Feelgood logo, mm -hmm. and he adapted it to have a dog on one end and a cat on the other instead of skulls, and that was the original Motley Zoo, we call it the classic right. logo, and mm -hmm. that is what drew Patty in initially, mm -hmm. she saw it's that, and so yeah, my husband thankfully is a really amazing artist, and that set us apart and set us ahead in terms of our branding. And from there, we took the zoo part, and I envisioned zebra print, right. animal print, zebra print. And so zebra print is our thing. And besides like orange, bright orange, bright green, green and purple, kind of those really vibrant colors, are black and white zebra or silver and gray zebra. Those are the things that we pair with it to kind of make sure everybody knows it's Motley Zoo. And that includes our cars. We right. Why don't you talk about that? <laughs> we were fortunate to actually win our first Motley Zoo vehicle, which was the Highlander. This was back when Toyota was doing the... 100 cars for good. Correct. And we just really needed uh, a vehicle. You did, for yeah. sure. Yeah. The brakes kept failing. And I mean, I guess the car that I had, they didn't design it properly. And I mean, I drive like I have animals in the back because I always do have animals mm -hmm. in the back. And so I'm not a super hard breaker. But anyways, my car was really kind of kaput. We couldn't afford to get another one because I wasn't paid. I was doing this full time unpaid and we really just couldn't afford a car. So it was very important that we win a car. I would say too, we needed to know the community was behind us. Mm -hmm. Like we were going through a period where we were a little worried about community engagement and support. And it was kind of like, if we can get the community behind us for this, then that's great. And if we can't rally people, I don't know, we might need to rethink this whole being a charity thing. But they'd done this contest for a few years and we'd watched and waited. And finally we were able to apply and we sent in a short video, and back then, man, doing videos was hard. <laughs> yeah. it, it was very difficult. It wasn't like your quick on the phone thing. Oh, gosh. No, it was so hard. So we sent in a quick video, and out of 3,000 charities, they accepted us. Right. And that was really a big deal. And every day for 100 days, five charities would go up against each other. Mm, yeah, competing. And when we looked at who was winning... Anytime it was an animal organization, it won. It won over everything else, which was a little surprising. But when we found out on our day that we were one of two other animal organizations right. that day, I literally fell out of my chair and was like, why? <laughs> Do we have to compete against another animal organization? Yeah. Yes. So we had to compete against two other animal organizations. Yeah. One was a sanctuary. Yes. And we actually ended up becoming friends with her because of that. We had a month to prepare. Mm -hmm. We pounded the pavement. Right. I, made, I made stickers for people to put on their calendars. We went to the dog park. We went everywhere. And I don't think there was anyone in Redmond that didn't know about <laughs> this contest. It was hard because we really had to rely on people to vote. And right. if they didn't vote, then it didn't count. Right. And it was pretty, it was a close, it was a close, close match. No. What are you talking about? We it was. We had 40% of the vote. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. I remember sitting on the couch that night watching the results come in, refreshing, 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 
And what worked for us in this instance, particularly for the people who didn't know us, was our branding. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know people chose us because we were Molly Zoo. Right. And so we did win. And sorry to the sanctuary and the big cat place that mm-hmm. didn't win. But the clock struck nine and we were in the lead. And Brian and I just looked at each other and he's like, I think we just won. I think we won the car. And I was like, I think we did too. And that was one of the really big triumphs of our early days. That was in 2012. Mm. And so it was a 2013 Highlander. And why don't you tell everybody about the fun that we had with the rat? The puppies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was after we had won that we got a call from our friend in Bellingham who said that they had a pregnant chocolate lab. And at the time, they didn't tell me that this was a very cat aggressive chocolate lab until after I got her home. Needless to say, I know, I didn't either until she got home and I had three cats. And needless to say, she learned not to be cat aggressive and actually ended up being adopted to a family that had a cat. Oh, good for you. Because we won from Toyota, we decided to name her Toyota and her babies were named after different vehicles. And it was a very, very long labor for her. I felt so bad for her. It was her first litter. She was scared. She didn't understand what was happening to her. And so we bonded. She's a good girl. She had a lot of puppies, too. She had 11 babies. She had five chocolates. And then she had a very hard time with the middle child, who happened to be a yellow lab that we named Highlander. So it was five chocolates, little Highlander, and then five more chocolates. So we designed a cool wrap Mm -hmm. for the car, and we thanked Toyota on the wrap, and we put baby Highlander on the wrap because he was unique. He was different from all the others. Sadly, he ended up being special in Mm -hmm. a health way, a health Mm -hmm. condition way, and he passed. Yeah, he passed away when he was three months. So he is immortalized on our car. We didn't want to change it at that point. We thought it would honor him. Mm -hmm. But uh, Toyota got a kick out of us naming the animals after the cars, and they thought that was really funny, so they sent us a letter. When we picked up the car, we had Toyota, the dog, with us to pick up the Toyota Highlander. Yes, yes, and one of the newspapers was there. It was really fun, and it was wrapped with a big red bow, which was very exciting. (laughs) I don't remember that. Yeah. It's black, too, underneath our wrap, which Mm. is zebra-striped. And the people who did the wrap, they were very excited about doing it, but they also said it was the most difficult (laughs) car that they'd ever done because they had to make the the zebra stripes match. Stripes match up on the bumper and and all that Mm. stuff. But they did a really great job with it. I think the next design that we came up with was the ACDC one, where it's just M-Z-A-R with the yes. bolt in between. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that one I really like a lot. That was a really good one, except it wasn't that big of a seller. No, it didn't sell very well, mm-hmm. and I really thought it would. No, yeah. But I still like that one. And mm-hmm. I... It's nice and simple to the point. Yeah, I don't know. I was surprised when it didn't sell very well. Um... In Aerosmith. Walk this way? Yeah, we had an Aerosmith one, which instead of the... Wheel, right? Wheel and wings, I think it is. Yeah, it's got the wings on it for sure. It's a paw print and wings. And I painstakingly drew (laughs) Motley Zoo in Aerosmithy like font. Maybe you need to do it bigger. Yeah, it wasn't as popular as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. But the Pitts Rock was. Pitts Rock, yeah. Pitts Rock, Miss Pitts, His Fits. Those are our three major ones. And Brian does designs still every now and then. But we've had other volunteers who are graphically design-oriented step up and start doing their t-shirt design. So now we've got Bohemian Rhapsody. We've got Claws and Roses. Metallica. 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 For all the David Bowie fans out there, we have a Ziggy Star Dog and a Kitty Stardust design. And they're quite popular. The Ziggy Star Dog is a French Bulldog. And the cat, cat's just a cat. <laughs> a silver tabby. It's, it's a Nebulon. No, I'm joking. <laughs> we do have a list of ongoing ideas. And so sometimes our volunteers will 
pick one of the ones that we already kind of have an idea mm-hmm. about. Bully Eilish. Yes. And then they'll execute it. Other times they come up with something on their own. Mm. But we always express them to, this is where we're going to get super duper picky about mm-hmm. the design. And mm-hmm. it has to be exactly right for it to be the Mo- Motley Zoo branding. branding. More recently over the pandemic, introduced a new brand of ours which encompasses a lot more types of designs, and it's called MZ Behind the Seams, Motley Zoo Designs Behind the Seams. And that came to me when I was thinking of what we want our store to represent, why are we different, why buy stuff from us, and it was because there was going to be an animal behind the seams of each design. Mm -hmm. Literally one of our animals is represented in every design that we sell, and the funds go directly to help support those animals in their vet care. We decided to, when they get adopted, if their bills aren't paid yet, they stay connected to the shirt. Mm -hmm. Because many times we have thousands of dollars worth of vet care. And just because they... Yeah, just, way. just because they got adopted doesn't mean that we actually pay for their vet care with those shirts. So that's why you'll see animals that are on there that may be already in a home, but we are still technically taking down the funds, the cost of their care. Remember when I was writing behind the seams and I accidentally made a typo and so the ms in seams became MZ, MZ. and then I was, realized it was MZ at the beginning, MZ at the end, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, that's, that's perfect. genius. It was accidental genius, which is a lot of our success <laughs> yeah, is yeah, exactly. accidental genius. So behind the scenes is S-E-A-M-Z dot com. Mm-hmm. In doing this store, MZ behind the scenes, we decided that the Motley Zoo branded stuff, the stuff that we're really, really picky about and the artists have to understand and be willing to work with us on hearing our input and all that, that we would also have a, a more free line. So we call that the Black Label line. Mm, that's the MZ. The Motley Zoo Black Label. And those are specific Motley Zoo designs and they're music themed, band oriented, whatever. But then the rest of the designs can be much more loosely based, more animal themed, rescue based, adoption based. And mm-hmm. so they're not Motley Zoo specific brands. It's right. animal loving, just yeah. animal support ideas. And the volunteers could come up with whatever they mm-hmm. want there. And during the pandemic, we had to make a pivot. So let's talk about what we did to get this brand going? We had to consider that, especially with the pandemic, everyone working from home, our daycare model was not working. No, yeah, everybody (laughs) Um, stopped going to daycare. Yeah, people stopped going to daycare. People stopped leaving their houses, Mm -hmm. but rescue did not stop. Some shelters actually stopped during the COVID pandemic. We never did. No. We took in animals. We took in a lot of animals. We still did our adoptions. And we still had to pay for all these special needs that we were still getting in addition to just your normal vet care. So we have different categories for our shirts. And of course, there's the black label. And then there's Pacific Northwest focused or cat focused or whatever. And then there's the litter box. Why don't you tell people what the litter box is? Well, it's kind of like rescue (laughs) shit. It's censored. It's our more, I I wouldn't say our risky designs, but it's, it's just for mature audiences, not safe for work or children, (laughs) potentially not vulgar, but just maybe using some you know, insinuations. Yeah, like the one that Fern did with the yoga dog licking its own butt. It's actually really <laughs> cute and funny, but, you know, it's a dog licking its butt. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, and your six-year-old doesn't need to go to school with that. No, that's probably not a good idea for them. <laughs> We're always looking for design ideas, designers. Well, even if you just have the idea for the words or mm-hmm. the concept, yeah, you just you can't a- draw it yourself. Even that helps. Yeah, definitely. And it all goes to the animals. So if you have an idea, definitely reach out. We would love to see if we can put it on a shirt. 
and help out more animals that way. Each of the guest artists have their own categories and they do get a small royalty. Most of them tell us to just donate it and they don't really take it, but uh, we have one girl that lived in Brazil mm -hmm. and she was communicating with us and she did the shine shine dog shine dog and shine me on designs with our guidance mm -hmm. uh, she said i love your stuff i want to do something and and so we told her these are some of the designs that we have in our heads that we haven't had time to do and you know just beware too if you pick the black label one <laughs> that we're going to be extra super duper critical but that's just because it's very particular what we want from Motley Zoo. But if we use your design, then we will give you a free shirt. Our shirts have even been seen on some celebrities. One of my favorites is Doyle from The Misfits, and he also has his own band. And he really likes the Ace of Spades design. And he wears like a, a medium, so it's super tight. And he, <laughs> he cuts it so it fits him just right. But yeah, he's a pretty ripped dude. To show his muscles. Yeah. He wears that a lot when he does signings and different interviews. And who else has more shirts? I've seen Barry Kirch, the drummer from Shine Down. He's got a Miss Pitts shirt. And I saw it on the social media on Instagram that he was tagging because he was working out because he's very, he too is very fit. And when we go to these events, the concert events and, and things like that, we normally do have some shirts that we do give the band members. And we will, upon occasion, see them. Yeah, <laughs> we're really going to town today. <laughs> when we have a, a public-facing booth where we sell the merch, maybe have an animal or two that we're showing off, and then we're off on stage behind the scenes, we bring some of the merch back and put it on the table, and we invite the artists to kind of take a look, and we'll go get them whatever it is that they are interested in. Another thing about our shirts is kind of like how we run our rescue. It's quality, not quantity. And so we want to have quality product as well. And that's why, if anyone knows, Jamie has a background in fashion design. So she's going to be super picky about material and... The fit. Who is it called? Yeah. Who's next it? level. Okay, I would say next gen. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I want to call it yeah, next so gen. Yeah, so we tested a few shirts and we tried them out to see which ones felt good and you know there are some that are cheap but they feel like cardboard like mm -hmm. you feel like you're wearing a sandwich board sign and we didn't want that so we pick next level and they have some really soft nice fabric and they wear pretty well yeah. and for the hoodies it's really important <sighs> that they don't pill yeah. I hate when they pill and so hoodies are really hard yes like, our, our shirts is next level and they've been great everything like that but our hoodies we yeah it's been hard to find the right hoodies and we've gone through a few different brands a few different varieties and independent trading is the one that we've settled on and we really like them but my only problem with them is that i like my sweatshirts kind of fitted and even, i like mine baggy well even the extra small is like humongous really uh -huh. yes so it's like for any woman that's small that wants a f relatively fitted hoodie, we don't have that. I would say most people are probably in your camp. So, you know, I'm not trying to buy clothes to cater to me, but the ones that we sell for the unisex sizes don't fit me. So I'm always on a quest for new good blanks that have the full range of sizes, including a women's kind of fitted size. One of the reasons we felt we needed to make a pivot with our revenue stream was because the screen printing process is really expensive. You have to pay for a screen for each color. You have to pay for a setup fee every time you want to get those shirts done. And so we would try and order as big of an order as we could. But meanwhile, we would spent a couple thousand dollars on an order and, and that's all. We, the whole order wouldn't, it wasn't. Yeah, we'd, we'd make it up over time right. selling that, but we don't sell that many that, you know, we would sell through. And then we'd have like a lot of so, one size sizes. and then, uh, yeah, it, it just, just selling them and having them in storage. Yeah, stocking the inventory stocking, became yeah. a really 
big deal, a very expensive process. And yeah, you know, it never would fail that someone would order the one shirt that we just ran out of that size. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have a whole run of shirts, but we'll be missing mediums. And in order to get more, we have to do a bunch more, like a couple dozen to make it cost effective. So we just need a few mediums, but we have to order a ton. So we had talked about this new technology at the time, and it was called Direct-to-Garment DTG. And back then, in those earlier days, the technology wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. The ink didn't stay on, it came off, and the prints weren't that great. But I had gotten a sample from Epson Mm -hmm. of this shirt printed with DTG and it, I don't know, it was some kind of wizard or troll or something and it was like for a sports team. And I thought, I'm going to put this through the wash periodically. And so I would just wash it all the time to see if the ink came off. Mm -hmm. And it didn't. By now too, it's like five years later and I'm thinking, if this shirt still looks good five years later (laughs) and I've been washing it on and off and now the technology would be that much better this DTG thing might be something we should look into. Right. We talked about it a lot just because every time we had an event, like we would go to Paint in the Grass where it's a three-day festival in Auburn and we would sell a lot of merchandise during these events. Yeah, that's probably our biggest, you know, merch event during the Mm -hmm. year. And, you know, the other thing about keeping all this inventory and stuff is that we had to Space. decide no but we had to decide if a design was really good right or if yeah. it was really going to sell right so we had to edit ourselves a mm-hmm. lot and we couldn't just try out a design we right had, we had to commit to it mm-hmm. so that was the other thing is that there were lots of things we didn't know maybe would be good sellers right. but we couldn't try it because it was too expensive yeah it's an expensive commitment whereas now with it direct to garment you can make as many designs as you want and you only print one shirt at a time. There's no setup fee. We're now making like 100% of the proceeds because ink is not that expensive. And that's also because they are designed by volunteers. Mm -hmm. They are printed by volunteers. And the only thing it costs us to do so is the shirt Mm -hmm. and the ink. Right. And we can put unlimited numbers of designs online And if nobody buys it, then we don't have to sell it. Yeah, so we can put even designs we're not really sure about up. And if they sell, they sell. If they don't, they don't. And we only print it when someone orders it. We ended up with one of those economic injury disaster Mm -hmm. loans. We put that towards this technology, which, again, Patty and I had talked about it for many, many years. Mm -hmm. It is a significant investment, but we decided it would be a really good one for us. And not only could we print shirts for us, but we could print shirts for other charities, Mm -hmm. for schools, for Mm -hmm. things like that. And we actually do a fair amount of print shop orders, including the bakery across the street. Pringles. Mm -hmm. The printing process is actually really fun. It's literally like an inkjet printer for a t-shirt. So instead of paper going through it, a t-shirt goes through it. And there are some videos online that you can see on our social media and and Facebook page or whatever about how the shirts print out but it is really cool to see the shirts printing and it's very exciting it's tricky sometimes there's a process and you have to learn the process and uh, I've taught a few volunteers how to do it and they do it really well and then they move away and <laughs> then thanks to- Dom and Fern <laughs> well, and Anya oh yeah Anya yeah yeah, yeah. and she designs her- yeah and both actually they, all three of them design shirts they, for us as well yeah they all design some really cool shirts but sadly they moved away and so that's been hard because it can be time consuming but we're not selling such huge volumes that I'm constantly printing t-shirts. But But we should. (laughs) Really, we should be. There is no reason why we shouldn't be selling more shirts. However, what it really comes down to is paying for advertising on Facebook, and we don't do that. Word of mouth, people. Word of mouth. Yeah. So spread the word. Check it out. (laughs) Oh, and we were on Animal Cribs once. uh, Oh, yeah. And that was, it was Pitt's Rock, right? No. 
No, no. Pitts Rock was on Villabos, Valabo. How yes. do you say that? Pitts Rock Pits was on Paroles. Pitts and Paroles. Yeah. One of our volunteers went to the shelter in New Orleans and gave some shirts away. And so every once in a while, watching Pitts and Paroles, we'll see the Pitts Rock design on some of the workers there. But no, Animal Cribs is a show where they redo people's houses and mm-hmm. they make their houses more pet friendly. And then when they're there, they'll find a shelter or a rescue to help support. And so the show came in and redid our cat lounge at the time in our old building. And they made it cool. They made it look like a club. So we had all these you know, posters on the walls. Well, so, it was the show box. So yeah. it did. So it really did look like a club. And then we had all these shelves, and we had musical instruments, and we had lots of fun things for the animals, and even real keyboards and drums and things like that. It was really fun, but every time that show airs, we get a bunch of t-shirt orders, Mm -hmm. because people see the shirts uh, and all our designs, and they go look us up, and then they order their shirts. And actually, when I went to Oregon, I went to an antique shop, and I was buying like a big old lumberjack saw like the two-person kind uh-huh yeah and the Weirdo. guy the, <laughs> i like old farm tools and the guy in the store saw the motley zoo car he's like oh my god i saw you guys on animal crabs he's like it was you and i was like yeah so it was kind of funny yeah. that they recognized me from the show 100 percent of the proceeds of our t-shirts go to the animals and every t-shirt has an animal that it represents in our rescue either past or previous and Previous. I mean, current. <laughs> Previous and past. <laughs> current or past. So it's a, a mixture of roadies and rock stars. And if you see a design that you like, you can go to our webpage at www.motleyzoo.org and go to the shop tab and peruse the many, many different styles and graphics that we have for our shirts. Yeah, and if you have any ideas yourself, we encourage you to send those over to us. You can also go straight to our store at MZ Behind the Seams, and seams is spelled with M-Z at the end, dot com. That's all the time that we have for this episode. This is Patty. And I'm Jamie. Rock on. Rescue on.